So I'll do my uh, traditional start. Uh, woo! Uptech, <laughs> class six. So I'm Casey Barrett, and I'm one of the lucky guys who got to start this uh, program. Uh, it was originally called the Big Idea, and we evolved to Uptech because the lawyers told us we couldn't use the Big Idea. Um, but uh, you know, I've had a crazy day, and I have not had any time. Usually, I like write my remarks and I talk. Um, exactly what I want to say and who I want to thank and everything. I have no written remarks. So I just decided that I was just going to speak from the heart and talk about the core of our program for a minute or so. And the core of our program is the community, you, everyone who's here, the volunteers. I don't know if you know, we run this program, um, a pretty big deal program with effectively one and a half people. Everybody else who gives time and volunteers to the program um, are just that, volunteers, and it's amazing. So I am going to take a couple seconds and recognize some of those people. Um, I'm going to do my best not to forget anybody, but, um, you know, we kind of start organizationally with uh, our board of directors who, again, all come, give hours and hours of time. Most of them actually volunteer as mentors also. And um, the chairman of our board, and who's been a stalwart, uh, great guy behind entrepreneurship for a long time, uh, Mr. Tom Pruitt. Um, so if we could give him a round of applause, trust me, you all recognize it. And then again, um, if, you're, if you're on our board, if you would stand up and stay standing for a second. Uh, and just to warn you, I can't see anything, so. So stay standing. You know, and, and that's one side of the house. That's the program side. The whole other side is we run a, run a for-profit fund. Um, again, when we started talking about this, people said we could not do it with volunteers. Well, seven years later, we proved you can do it with volunteers. And the three people at the absolute core of that is, and again, if you know anything about investing, we have three folks who have given their time over the years and served as volunteer fund managers. Now, I will tell you, normally those words don't go together, but volunteer fund managers. We kicked off with Brad Zapp. I don't know if Brad's here. Um, then Andy Sassy came along, and lately it's been Trey Tappy. If you guys could stand up for a second, it's amazing. Uh, and so, I don't know if you know, if you've been here before, but this is report card time, right? Uh, we're, all these companies are going to do a great job, but all in all, how's the program going? For the folks who found this program, besides spending hours and hours uh, on early Monday morning, we started our meetings at 7.30 every Monday when we planned this thing, um, we set some goals. Uh, and, and I'm a big person on three, so of course we have three goals that we set. And so let's see where we stand. Number one, we were going to create 50 technology companies in northern Kentucky. We're at 47 tonight. I, I think we'll take an A minus, you think? Is that all right? Okay. Uh, maybe after you guys present, we'll see if, if we earn the A minus or not. It's no pressure. Um, secondly, we said we were going to energize the entrepreneur mentoring uh, service sector of Northern Kentucky. Back, I know this is going to be a strange story, and I confirmed it uh, with, a, with, um, with Tom, a lawyer. Um, back in 2010, 2011, were there attorneys in Northern Kentucky at firms who could do an equity deal, kind of a broad term? And the answer is no. Are there attorneys today in Northern Kentucky who can do equity deals? Yes. So that's just one thing. We have now accountants who know how to account for entrepreneurs who have not so much on the asset side. Uh, we have lawyers who can write deals, write uh, that entrepreneurs need, and it goes on and on. Mentors. We quit counting a couple years ago when the list topped 200. We have 200, well, many more, I would guess it's probably double that, who go out, give their time, and touch and help Uptech Company. So if you've touched an Uptech com up Company and helped out over the last six years, please stand up. That's pretty impressive. We are a community-driven organization. And the third, so what do we get? What grade on that? Let's take an A. What? We'll take an A. Um, 
And we are humble at Uptech too, by the way. Um, the final grade that we set out to ourselves was um, we had no equity investing culture in Northern Kentucky. And I know people are probably scratching their heads saying, oh, he's not telling the truth. No, I am telling the truth. We had zero equity dollars in play. We'd had a state grant that we had really relied on for a few years uh, to attract and get companies to fund them. And uh, that was no longer in play. And we looked around and we're like, oh my gosh, how do you get companies here if you don't have equity investment capital? So we went to work on it. And um, today we have, I think uh, we were trying to add it up, about $17.5 million in play in equity funds. We know how to do equity deals. We have angel groups. Thank you. I, again, I want to add um, everything that happened there was all volunteers and community people. Again, an amazing thing. So on a report card, did I hear two A's and an A minus? We got work to do. We got to get that A minus up to an A. Um, so we're going to get started. You don't want to hear from me. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing um, the managing director of Uptech, J.B. Woodruff. And, you know, I've never met a person that the first time I met him and sat down, I have a standard line, where would you be in five years? If everything went perfect, where would you be in your life? And he said, I would be running an accelerator. Um, I've never had that answer ever. So about a year and a half later, we had an opening in our uh, executive director spot on Accelerator, and I'm like, I know the guy. It's J.B. Woodruff. Thank you, Casey. Uh, my name is J.B. Woodruff. I am the managing director of Uptech, and tonight is Uptech's sixth demo day. Everybody's worked really hard, but I want to get started by thanking our funders. These are the ones that make it possible for us to run our program every year. And this year in particular, we have some great funders. We have the State of Kentucky's Cabinet for Economic Development. I'd also like to thank the R.C. Durr Foundation, Northern Kentucky's Triad, the Kentucky Innovation Network's Northern Kentucky office, PNC Bank, the City of Covington, and finally, oh, not finally, the Northern Kentucky Fund, the Greater Cincinnati Foundation, and finally, Duke Energy. Before we get moving a little bit forward, I do want to invite a special guest to the stage, one of our primary funders over the years, which is the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we're fortunate enough tonight to have Governor Matt Bevin in our audience. He's going to come up and talk a little bit about what he's doing and what he believes about entrepreneurship in the state. Thank you, sir. I will say this, I wasn't intended to be here, you don't need to come here to hear me. I heard, I was here for another event, I was, uh, some folks that were coming here were gracious enough to invite me. It's truly an honor, not only for us as, as the Commonwealth to fund this venture, but just for me personally. For some of you, you may be aware of this is the first political job I've ever had, I'm an entrepreneur. And I've either personally started or been the initial seed capital for more than 10 different companies. And some of which has gone nowhere, uh, and some of which has had nine-figure exits. So the reality is you don't know what the next great idea is. And while this room is fairly full, and it's not completely packed, I would say to those of you that are going to be presenting, who I think are down in this section, bring your A-game. Bring a passion and bring a sense of urgency because you don't, and for those of you, there are people in this room that could literally take you to whatever next level you would want to go to or could go to and know that. Regardless of whether you think they're here or not, there are people who both individually and are members of groups that could write any check you would need to get to the next level. And so have passion. Rico and I, we were talking about this. If you don't believe in your company, who's going to believe in your company? The reality is, if you don't have a sense of urgency and passion, who's going to believe in you? And so I would say to those of you as well, for some of you that come thinking you're going to hear the next whatever, I don't even want to say a name because you know, the reality is it might be one of these companies. I would encourage you to be open-minded. Some of you have capital to invest. Some of you believe in this community, believe in this commonwealth, believe in this region. 
but you're keeping your powder dry. I would encourage you, don't keep your powder dry. Put your capital at risk. Be thoughtful, be mindful, but put your capital at risk. The answer to where you can get that ROI might be in one of these next six pages. It may not be. But I would say this, there's sometimes the most unexpected places. And if you're not going to invest now, when? What are you waiting for? The Commonwealth needs you. We're creating an environment in which you're going to have a better opportunity than ever before to see your capital grow. We're creating an environment in which it's going to be more and more possible for there to be a good return. But I would encourage you to hear these folks out. I understand this is going to be live streamed, and I'm going to try to watch this as I'm driving out of here to my next appointment. I wasn't, again, expecting to be here, but I'm so grateful for the chance to be. I'm grateful that the Commonwealth can come alongside. And I want to leave both you as presenters and you as potential investors, and you also as leverage. Because all of you, whether you're here to invest or just to support and listen, you know me. Go out of here. Don't keep a secret what you've heard. I literally, there was a company that I heard some years ago. They were in a very early seed stage round. The fellow who was at that time their CEO, who had retired as an executive with a large company right across the river, and was serving as an interim CEO for this company, told me tonight he's not in that capacity now. He said, that was make or break for us. I was one of the very first investors because I heard this company and I believed in the guy who had started it. I believed in his passion. I believed in his enthusiasm. And so I invested in this country, they, in this company. They actually just completed another $6 million round and are taking themselves to another level. Again, whether it becomes everything everybody hopes for, time will tell, but they are well on their way. Mine is now just a tiny little piece of that company. It was a much, much bigger piece. But that's the whole point. And I would just simply say to this, in closing to all of you, the guy that invented the very light bulbs under which I'm blinking right now, Thomas Edison, said most people in life miss opportunity. Because it usually shows up in overall and looks like hard work. That's true. That's true. You're about to hear six people who are going to come up here at least figuratively in overall. Your determination is to decide which of them will work hard enough to help make their opportunities come through. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. That was a really special treat to have him here tonight. Have a safe trip back to Frankfurt. I'm going to keep going, guys. We got some time here. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about are, you know, those funders made this the program possible and they made tonight possible. We had additional funder sponsors who stepped up to help us cover things like our valet tonight. Big thank you to Centrifuge, Tapestry Strategy, and Harris Media. Rudy's over there taking photographs. If you need photographs, he's the man. So big, big thank you to our sponsors. And then before I get into the program, a couple house rules, a couple things, I want you guys to share. I want you to share photographs. Please use the hashtag uptech6demoday. You might notice the Wi-Fi's are kind of weird, so please, I would suggest just turning it off and use your cell signal, best way to do it. While you're in here, uh, it's going to be about an hour and a half. So if you guys need to use the restroom, please feel free to do so. It's out in the hall, down the stairs. Um, but please take, take the, be respectful of the speakers and do so between speeches if you can, and so to not be too disruptive. And speaking of not being disruptive, please silence your mobile phones. Goes without saying, right? And then finally, please have fun. This is our community demo day. This is an opportunity for our community to come in and see the latest in innovation in our community. So please have fun. Stick around afterward for our reception. It's going to be a great time. So to jump in, Casey gave a great introduction about Uptech, which is awesome because I don't have to cover all that stuff. And it's a good opportunity to say, here's where we are today. So we are still over there here in Covington on Pike Street. If you have not been to Uptech, we welcome you to come down and check it out. But there, we are the accelerator for B2B data-driven startups looking, uh, developing tech-enabled solutions. So what does that even mean? Well, we've, we have, over time, fine-tuned what we're investing in. We're investing in B2B startups, those that provide data-driven solutions for their customers. But I'm going to dive into that a little bit more. So there's three ways that we differentiate ourselves at Uptech. The first, data-driven. Yes, it's how we invest. 
but more importantly, it's how we train our entrepreneurs. We believe that you need to be a data-driven individual, a data-driven organization, so that you are using insights to make informed decisions when you're building your business. The second, our hands-on approach. I meet with every company for one hour every week. These founders can attest to the fact that I spend a lot of time with them, and I don't let them get away with anything. But I also use that time for them to just talk to me about their challenges. We're here to help them move through anything they can. And in being a hands-on program, we can custom tailor the program to what they need. And then finally, investable. You need a goal. And our goal when you come through our five plus one month program is when you walk out the doors, you are an investable company. Well, what does that mean? That's not, that's not meaning you have to give this great pitch and you're gonna get all this money, no. It means you're a solid business. You're a solid team. You have a meaningful solution to a real problem. That will make you an investable company. So that is the goal, and I push every day to make sure that these founders get there. So how do we do this? Well, we have our team. There's myself. We have Abby Ober, Marketing and Operations Director. A big thank you to Abby, and please a round of applause, because she's the one that made this possible tonight. And every year we bring in an in-house graphic designer. This year we have Thor, I mean Kevin. Kevin is on our team. He's been amazing, so every year we love having him around. And then behind the scenes we have our great board. They're the ones that are my sounding board. Figure of speech. But um, at the end of the day, they are the ones that, I, that advise me and make sure that we're on a good path. We have community leaders. We have entrepreneurs. We have investors. These are the folks that are driving this program forward and I thank them for the work they do. And I would definitely be remiss in not calling out Cheryl Stolze. She works with the Kentucky Innovation Network and she is the one that is the glue that helps all of this work out well in terms of the money flow with the funds. So big thank you to Cheryl in, in what she does. That's in-house. What's out of house? What's, what, what's the community? That's all of you. And our community is comprised of investors, mentors, entrepreneur, business people, People who are just interested, students, educators. And the number of individuals keeps growing and growing and growing. And that community has affectionately become Startup Cincy. And we've moved in a whole new world. We're probably six, seven years, maybe even eight years into this now. And we're just on a, we're on a tipping point. We have an opportunity to, to change Cincinnati's regional focus. And today, I challenge all of you to change it in saying, we're gonna work more with, edu with the education space. We're gonna work more with corporations. Yes, I said the dirty word when it comes to startups, corporation. Bear with me, though. The fact of the matter is, the perception is that corporations can be sluggish, lethargic, unable to innovate, easily disruptible. I don't believe that's the case. I think we have a new opportunity here. Jeff Immel said it right. He said, nobody wants to work at an old-fashioned company. Nobody wants to buy products from an old-fashioned company. And nobody wants to invest in an old-fashioned company. So how do we change that? Just last night, I was reading a book by Eric Ries. He did the Lean Startup, if you guys are familiar with this. And I thought Eric said it best. And he said, a modern company has the capacity to produce products with great reliability and quality but also to discover what new products to produce. And so our new char charge at Uptech, and we started it this year with St. Elizabeth Healthcare, was to work and partner with corporations to discover how do we help them change that innovative culture? Change the culture so they're focused on innovation, enabling their employees to, not, to enable them to not be disrupted. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite Matt Holland Camp from St. Elizabeth to the stage, he's the Vice President of Marketing, Communications, and PR, to talk a little about what they're doing in the innovation space and, in this, and how they feel about the region. So Matt, ah, Great. there you are. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it, JB. Really happy to be here. Uh, at St. Elizabeth, um, the, we really greatly value the ecosystem of entrepreneurs and startups in our community or region. I think it's a point of difference. Um, you know, one of the reasons why is because it's a way to get things done, to make things happen. Uh, I think all of you are a part of that. Um, you know, we really believe in the mentality of 
new co's, or large co's like us partnering with new co's like all of you. Uh, I think that's the right mentality. Innovation is one of the five core values at St. Elizabeth. It's been with us for 150 plus years. So what does that mean? We are constantly striving to push ourselves to think differently, think out of the box, invent. Um, you know, one of the ways that is manifested, one of the many ways, there's lots of ways we kind of see innovation is I have to mention this because it's going to be coming out here <laughs> very, very soon. Uh, what we're going to announce with our cancer care work uh, is in precision medicine. Precision medicine is, is an area that uh, is, it could very much dramatically improve the way that we provide cancer care uh, in our region. And cancer, I think as you, you might know, one of the biggest problems that our region faces in Kentucky, we lead the way in numerous forms of cancer. We're number one in the country uh, in lung cancer. And so how do, we, how do we do that? So precision medicine is a very innovative way to think about doing that through genetic testing, through leveraging data to, to understand if you have a predisposition for a cancer. And well ahead of when you might have that cancer, we can treat it, prevent it through certain procedures. We have a very lofty vision at St. Elizabeth, um, one that we just greatly, greatly value is to help make our region, our community, specifically Northern Kentucky, one of the healthiest communities in, in uh, the country, in the United States. Uh, we can't do it alone. We need collaborations, partnerships, people, organizations. It's a lot of people that do that. That's one of the reasons why we turn to a place like Uptech. Uh, it, it can help us explore and, and, and find new ways to, to uh, improve the health of our community, and we've just greatly value that partnership because there's, we, we need innovative thinkers, innovative doers, uh, most importantly. And so we're, we're open for business, open to explore. Um, you know, it could be ways to improve the patient experience, uh, and there's lots of ways to do that. It could be preventing someone to come, come, come to our hospital uh, to improve their health in all kinds of unique different ways. Um, you know, one thing I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention is, is a, an area that we're very much leading the way in, and that's with our opioid crisis and heroin. Uh, you maybe remember the uh, Hacking for Heroin event, 2017, uh, kind of the 2.0 of that is what we're doing now through the infrastructure of 17A and Centrifuge, uh, leveraging that fund to explore technology-enabled ways to try and fill in the gaps of this very, very serious issue in our community. So again, very open to, to explore. I look forward to hearing the pitches tonight. Uh, we got a team at the ready to, uh, to test and learn at all times, and again, really appreciate all you do. Thanks. Thank you very much, Matt. That was fantastic to have you here. Uh, give us an insight into what one corporation is doing. We look forward to working with more uh, with St. Elizabeth and other corporations in the time to come. So one of the last things I wanted to talk about was giving you an insight into how our program works at Uptech. So we have these great founders, and we meet with them once a week in a team meeting. And what we do is we talk about the challenges they have, how we can shape the program to make it better for them, we talk about what they learned and how they can share with each other. And then the last thing we talk about are the wins. It's vitally important for entrepreneurs to celebrate their wins, talk about them, because we all know there's this amazing roller coaster of emotions that you go through as an entrepreneur. It can be very, very hard. So we use that as a moment to celebrate. So I'm in that spirit, I'm gonna talk about some wins from three of our graduates from last year. The Monetizer, a Latvian-based company, went through Techstars Atlanta. They got their initial customers in place, early stage revenue. They've been able to raise $750,000. And they are launching their own cryptocurrency in the second quarter of this year, which will revolutionize the game reward system. Thank you. Next up is paper. They got into the Vatican. <laughs> they were accepted out of the first class of the Vatican, which is the Laudato Si Challenge, aimed at tackling climate change. Their solution's all about paper, paper waste reduction within corporations. As a result of that experience, they've, been, they've gone on to raise a half a million dollars, and they have their first major pilot in place in the Midwest with Valio. Very exciting stuff with paper. And then the last, yes, thank you. And then the last of, of the highlights that I like to cover is I Report Source. They are in-house, yes. They, uh, they, in January of this year, launched their MVP. 
They're in a position to start generating revenue right now as they seek new customers. And they were able to raise over $1 million so that they could stay here in Covington. And they're currently housed at the Kentucky Innovation Network. It's a great story to have in, in our region and from our uh, past. And then last, every year, we look at this list. And in the spirit of the Olympics, my daughter made this for me. Thank you, Samantha. And thank you, my wife, Shannon. <laughs> we got a bronze, gold, bronze medal this year. But what that translates into is the fact that we are a top 30 program in the country. We're, this region is now home to two top 30 programs in this country, and this is fantastic. We have our sights set for gold next year. Keep your eye out. So we'll see what happens, but it's a great, great win for us in this program and what we've been doing. And then the last thing I have is I want to introduce our sixth cohort. We have a great group of founders who are going to start their pitches as soon as we watch this video. So please enjoy. We're really making data-driven decisions. They're helping us find those key data points behind the business solutions so we can present those key solutions to the brands we're working with. From JB to the mentors and advisors, they help us really think more granular about the problems we're solving. It goes back to talking to our customers and picking their brain. It lets us know we're doing the right thing and accelerates our growth. So I think we made a mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make and that we had an idea um, and really didn't test that idea and validate it. So Uptech really allowed us to go through the process of validating our theories. Um, we found out there were some holes in the business plan and we decided to pivot. So now we, you know, we found a better market opportunity, something that we're really passionate about and found a real problem that we believe our customers have. So we're more excited about kind of the route that we're going now. Cromart was built on speculation. It was something that I thought was an issue. It is an issue, but we learned that through the voice of the customer. Without that piece, customer interviews and so forth, which we did a ton of them, we would have probably overbuilt, wasted a lot of money and a lot of time on speculation. It's something that's been very beneficial throughout the Uptech program. So one of the first things Uptech told us to do was get out of our own network. The one thing Uptech is about is going from I think to I know. We were able to find that from our experience and expertise by talking to the right customers, we were able to pinpoint what the actual solution needed to be. That need that we're solving was transformative for our market. It allowed us to find an underserved client and build a solution they really needed. So in my view, investable business is the business that can build and then can sell. Um, and then we right now is at that point, we have significant traction. Right now we need help with scaling the business. Uptech is all about that. It's about helping me hire a team, helping me uh, figure out sales process and helping me uh, create repeatable um, sales process. The culture that we're creating is really obsessed with uh, the customer experience whether it's the uh, experience that they have within the software we're building, the experience that they have with us throughout the sales process. We want to make sure that everything we do, the customer is first, and it's a really unmatched experience. It's that culture, we believe, is what will give us the, the traction that we need in order to become an investable company. Being in an environment that is so diverse and with such a strong leadership provides a very qualitative source for inspiration and for information. The peer-to-peer -peer exchange has been very enriching to me. I couldn't be uh, any more excited because of all the qualitative inputs from either the leadership or the peers that I've uh, grown to appreciate over time. Through the initial process of going through Uptech, working with JB and others, uh, we really discovered that even though our love and our focus was on gaming, we had learned so much about augmented reality, it only made sense to marry augmented reality with our deep experience in advertising. And Uptech really helped us realize that mission. Through that process, working with JB over the course of six months, he really helped us realize that, that we had bigger ideas. <laughs>